Dear students, in our previous class, we have discussed regarding invoking constructors. But in our today's class, we are going to discuss about the copy constructor and then constructor overloading and the last thing that is the destructor. So now, directly I am moving to the copy constructor. That is the copy constructor. As we have seen two types of constructors, one is default constructor, the next one is parameterized constructor, the same way this is copy constructor. Come we shall see what is meant by copy constructor and what is the use of this copy constructor. Okay. Copy constructor is copy constructor is a parameterized constructor. Copy constructor is also a parameterized constructor. Okay. Next, we are seeing now what is the use of this constructor. Using it, using which one object, one object can be copied to. Can be copied to another object. Hope you have understood this. Okay, it is a parameterized constructor. Copy constructor is a parameterized constructor. With the help of this parameterized constructor, one object, any object, will be, okay, but that should be an object. One object can be copied to. Another object. This is meant by the copy constructor, and this is the use of a copy constructor. And we are having some <coughs> points on the copy constructor. Come, we shall see what are these points. Copy constructors are used. Copy constructors are used in are used in the following situations. The following situations. Some situations are there where copy constructor can be used. Come, we shall see what are these situations. The first situation. In which situation this copy constructor can be used? The first one is to initialize to initialize to initialize an object when an object can be initialized at the time with the values of with the values of existing object with the values of already existing object with the values of already existing object ok if see here one object can be copied to another object ok this means the same thing here, to initialize an object, a new object, to create a new object at the time, the, this object can be created with the values of already existing object. It means one object is already present, the values of this object are copied to the new object for initialization. Okay? To initialize an object. The values of already existing object are used. Okay, this is the first point, first situation where copy constructor is used. Come, we shall see the second point. 
second point is second situation is when object must be returned objects must be returned as function values as function values okay when objects must be returned as function values at this time object can be returned as a function value okay at that time this copy constructor is used and now the last point third one we are going to see third thing is to state to state objects as by to state objects as by value parameters of a function as by value parameters of a function okay when objects has to be stated stated means mentioned okay at the time with the help of parameter values of a function when object needs to be stated it means needs to be used at the time okay this objects should have the values of parameters if a function is having the values of parameters then with the help of that function an object can be used or stated at this time copy constructor can be so these are the three situations where copy constructors can be used and the last point now i am going to write not about this about not about the situations but about the definition of a copy constructor the point is copy constructor can be said copy constructors can accept copy constructor can accept a single argument a single argument of reference a single argument of reference to same class type to same class type okay a copy constructor it will accept an argument of a reference an argument which is given as a reference that argument is accepted by a copy constructor okay and in the same class type if that argument is of the same class then at that time that argument can be accepted as a reference by the copy constructor and the last point now is see the argument the argument must be must be passed must be passed as a constructor as a constructor reference type as a constructor reference type okay an argument must be passed must be here must be okay an argument must be passed as constructor reference this can be passed as the reference of a constructor an argument can be passed as 
a reference of a constructor. These are the things about a copy constructor. Now I am going to give you a syntax and example of the copy constructor. See, this is the syntax for copy constructor. Syntax is class name, first class name should be here. class name. Then after that here, we have to use the scope resolution operator in the copy constructor. This is the scope resolution operator. Then again class name. Okay, after that inside the parenthesis again class name give space then and percent then btr. Like this, the syntax of a copy constructor can be given. First class name, then scope resolution operator, again class name, then within the parenthesis as argument class name and a pointer ptr means it is a pointer okay in your 11th chapter you will going to know about the pointers the complete chapter is about pointers then you will understand about the pointer just you remember here it is a pointer now take the example okay i will take class name as x Okay, this. Then scope resolution operator. Again, class name, the same class. After that, within parentheses, again class name, then P T R. See here. What is the definition of copy? What is the use of a copy constructor? An object can be copied using this object. An object can be copied to another object using copy constructor. So here. The value of x, x is an object here. It is copied to another object that is p, t, r. So, like this, the syntax and example of a copy constructor can be given. Now, I am going to write a program on copy constructor. Then you will understand clearly the use of copy constructor. Now, I am going to write a program on copy by going to slow down, hash and include I use screen dot x then take class given class name as copy okay then we have to take one variable that is private first okay private x is specific under private we need to take one variable that is of var, v a r. Okay, then after that we need to write public. Then public, under public we need to take some values here. Okay, copy, then here it is a member function 8, 10. Copy, 8, 10. Then open variable equals 10. After that, close this. Then we need to take one more thing. One more. This is a member function. Or this is a constant. Okay. Then we need to take one member function. That is. Eight. Okay. Calculate. Like this we have. Eight calculate. This is the calculation part. Okay. Then under calculation part, we need to take two variables. One is fact. Okay. Another one is fact. Here we have taken one fact. We have here CD fact. Okay. Then one is I. So we need to assign values for these two things. What is fact? Fact okay, is equal to 1. The value of fact is 1. Then after this, we need to take one loop for i equals 1. Okay, because here we have taken fact equals 1. So then i less than or equal to b a r. Then 
i plus one for loop we have taken p okay after for loop now we need to do the calculation then in fact it was fact into i factorial equals factorial into i then after that return finally return to fact again we can return to factorial why i am taking factorial here means okay to find the factorial of a given number we are writing the program for finding the factorial of a given number then after that close this open brace is closed here then now class is open close the class then after closing class what will happen we need to start the main program here so write the main program main here main program here. so first we need to take it as void again void main then for reading okay we need to take one input variable that is int okay after that if you want clr as a you can do all its only just write directly c out okay enter the numbers enter the number okay so we have taken this for output purpose then we need to read this is c in n for the reading purpose then of copy of object n copy of object n then of that the second copy of c p y then equal c p y equals object we need to see two things we have taken one is object another one is c p y c p y c p y is assigned to the value of c p y is assigned to object then finally printing output c out before before applying in before applying in. okay then what we are reading here yeah then of that okay then no space and continue here factorial equals okay then what is object o b g dot calculate object dot calculate then of this and n this is the first and the last output that is c out then here before applying we have taken then after that after applying after applying after applying then same thing and then of that factorial equals okay of the here then here object dot calculate object is compared to assigned with cpy so cpy dot calculate then finally and f then of that here program is going to be closed here like this we have to write the program for copy constructors now what is the output of this program what's the output of this program Copy constructor. So this is copy 
but the argument is an return that is different. Look, same function here, but argument is and the return types are different. Okay, this is called function overloading. Same like this here, constructor is having the same name but different signatures. It is called constructor overloading. Okay, now I am going to give you the syntax of constructor overloading and an exam. Now write out the program for this constructor overloading. Okay, hash include I use name dots. Okay, as in every program, I use to use then class. We have to take one class. This class can be, we can be given this as simple index. Simple index. Calculating simple index. Okay. This program is for calculating simple index. So we will give the name as simple index. After that, take first we have to take that is private data. Right? Yes. Under private, then we need to take we are calculating simple things. For that, decimal places we have. So we will take flow. T, T, R, then yes, R. Why? The, to use the formula of simple entries. Then after this, we have to do one thing here. Now what we have to do? After private, public. Right? Public. Here we need to define okay, the default constructor that is simple index. Okay? What is the rule of default constructor? The name of the class should be the constructor name. Okay? Then default constructor, after default constructor we need to use braces. Then here we, now we have to do constructor overloading. We can write this clearly. Constructor overloading. What we have to do? Same constructor we have to overload here. We should give or different argument list. Here no argument list, but here we need to give some more argument list for overloading of a constructor. See. Simple index. Then float x comma there is no space so I can write it here float okay y then float z like this we need to check the what constructor here this is constructor and this is the overloaded constructor then after that, after this thing, now we need to compare p equals x. Okay, then p equals y. Then r equals z. Okay, we have compared p, t, and r. P equals x, p equals y, and r equals z. Now we have taken like this. Then after that. We need to calculate void compute compute yes I simple interest. We need to calculate here. Okay, calculation part, right? Calculation part C out simple interest is simple interest is equal to now here we need to use the formula for simple interest. What is the formula? P into T into R. Okay. Then so to write here itself to make it very easy. Simple interest is equals okay. Then P into R divided by 
okay it looks like constructor itself okay but it is having a sign that sign is called as a tail the sign for the tail the symbol okay then the name is same as the top of constructor then the name the name same as the top same as the top a class okay same as the top a class but preceded by preceded by tilde symbol t i l d e tilde this will be like this okay tilde symbol constructor a sorry it is structure looks like it same as the top okay if it same term like customer constructor then the name same as the top a class okay name is same as the top class Class, but we see that by the tilde symbol, constructor. This structure is always preceded by a tilde symbol. Now I am going to give you the syntax for. So the syntax for this structure is syntax. I am giving you. I will give you the very simple syntax about that structure. That is, take class. Take class name as. Okay, what we have to do? Take any class name. Just like now, take class name is vector one. Class name is this vector. Then open after copy. Okay, right first private. Private. Okay, and private. Take any variable. int p then under public okay here constructor and constructor will come this constructor okay this is a so you will get a name that you see here so i will give you like p u c okay so take here also This is a constructor, okay? And if we give a tilde symbol before this constructor name, then this will be a constructor. Like this, we have to give the symbol for the constructor. Constructor, okay? It is same like the constructor, but it is followed by a tilde symbol. So it is preceded by a tilde symbol. Constructor itself, if it is with Preceded by a tilde symbol, then it will become a destructor. Okay. Now I am going to give you a programming example on destructor. So write down the example for example for destructor. Okay. That is class counter. Okay. Then. Use private. That will be int counter. Okay. Int counter. We are taking counter everywhere. Then under public. Okay. Now take this as counter. Okay. What it will be? See, this is a constructor. Okay. After that, you know what you know. Counter equals zero. Counter equals zero. So it goes. After that, use this letter followed by tilde. Okay. Counter. This is the this letter. Then the class is closed. This is the example. And syntax is before this. I have given example. Now I am giving you the syntax before this thing. Which I have written that is PUC. That is also an example. That is not a syntax, but syntax is here. Okay, class. Then class name. Syntax is written like this. Class name. Then open after that private. Okay. 
okay and the private what you can you use data members or the member data data members okay then under public okay class name class name then open and close this is the concept okay so for this thing if you use field symbol then it will become tradition class name same thing nothing is different but just a field symbol is used for descriptor so this is the syntax for the descriptor on this class and on these examples and syntax your chapter that is constructors and descriptors has been completed if you have any doubts you can ask me personally dear students thank you next we shall move with our next chapter chapter that is inheritance